My name is Colin Lord, and I work with Solomon Admissions Consulting. Um, I've worked in enrollment management for nearly three decades at various levels. And I'm here to talk to you about navigating the school tour and interview visit. The goals of the visit are one, for the school to learn more about who you are and get an opportunity to interface with you in a one-on-one -on -one situation, which will probably be the only time someone from the admissions office does that during the process. It's also an opportunity for you to assess whether the school is a good fit for you. Because in addition to the academic programs, extracurricular activities, I think it's important that you feel like you can be part of that community. And a tour and interview um, are some ways to help you determine if that's the case. In terms of preparing for the visit, one of the things I tell families is that you want to schedule your interviews as soon as possible. Reason being, many schools, arguably most boarding schools, have seen an increase in applications on a yearly basis, but the number of interview spots have not kept up with that um, increase. So you don't want to be in a situation where you, you're waitlisted for an interview or you don't get the opportunity to visit or interview at all. In addition to that, I tell families that it's imperative that they do their research. Um, students should definitely visit the websites of the schools they're going to visit and review um, from basic information like the number of students, the location of the school, so on and so forth, to the academic offerings, any special academic programs they may have. And of course, you want to check to see what the extracurricular activities are and whether or not things that you are interested in are available in that community. Um, I tell students that when you do your research, it makes the entire visit much more productive because you know exactly what you need to ask, you know exactly what you need to look for, and, and it also provides you the opportunity to develop good questions for the interviewer because Every interviewer will give you the opportunity to ask questions. And this goes back to what I said before about you assessing whether the school is a good fit for you. When you do your research, it allows you to develop good questions for the interviewer. In terms of the day of the interview, you definitely wanna make sure that you get there on time. You definitely do not wanna be late. The tour guides, are usually students who volunteer their time and they use their free period to do the tour. So you were talking about maybe 50, 45 to 55 minutes usually that they have available to do the tour. So even if you're just 15 minutes late, it's definitely gonna make it a lot more difficult for the tour guide and the admissions office in general to provide you with the type of experience that they want you to have. Uh, if you get to campus, let's say an hour early, I do not suggest that you walk into the admissions office an hour early because that makes things awkward. It's kind of like showing up early for a party. But you can use that time productively by driving around the community around the campus so you can get a sense as to what type of community the school is in. If you have enough time, you might even want to pop into a coffee shop or to a restaurant, grab a bite and just see how the, uh, the, what the atmosphere is since your student will be part of that community for some time. Uh, I recommend that you walk into the admissions office about 15 minutes before your interview. Um, and when you do that, I also recommend that the student take the lead. And what I mean by that is, um, this is an opportunity for the student to show that they're mature enough, they're responsible enough, and when they walk into the admissions office, they can introduce themselves and tell the person that greets them what time their appointment is. And then they can introduce their parents and or guardian to the greeter. The greeter will take you into the waiting room. They'll show you where the restroom is. They'll offer you um, refreshments. Um, but while you wait to start your tour, I recommend that students not pull out their smartphones 
but rather take the opportunity to review any literature that might be on the tables in the waiting room. Uh, your tour guide will eventually um, greet you in the waiting room. Um, some schools will separate students and parents. Some schools will have a tour guide uh, assigned to each family. But ultimately, um, the students should definitely use this opportunity to ask all the questions that they have because I think there is uh, value in students talking to students about their experience. It's all, doing the tour is also a good time to pay, pay, attention to, uh, pay attention to the community in general. In other words, uh, when you see other students, are they engaging each other? Do they look happy? When you walk by, are people saying hello? Um, those type of things ultimately will give you a sense of the type of community that you are considering um, for boarding school. Um, in terms of attire, I tell students all the time that um, there is no right or wrong dress code, so to speak. Um, I have yet to see a school spe specify what type of dress students should, should have for an interview. Um, most websites, however, do state that you should wear comfortable shoes because the tours are walking tours. In addition to that, depending on what time of year it is and where you're going to be touring, you also want to make sure that you have the appropriate clothing because um, most tours will take you in and out of buildings, so you will be outside exposed to the elements. Um, ultimately, students should wear what makes them comfortable and confident, whether it be a three-piece suit or a hooded sweatshirt what makes you comfortable should be the determining factor. Um, in terms of the interview itself, um, most schools will interview the student first. Then after that is completed, the, the, the interview will take the student back to the waiting room, collect the parents or guardians, and then they will debrief for the parent or guardian. From the student perspective, something that you should know keep in mind is that this is not a job interview. This is an interview for a student applying for boarding school, and the interview is developmentally appropriate. In other words, um, there are no questions to trip you up. Um, no one's trying to make you look silly. All they're trying to do is get a better idea of who you are, um, the things that you're passionate about, whether you have intellectual curiosity, and re you really love learning, and whether you um, are someone of character, um, ultimately would be a good community member um, at that school. You always want to make sure that you are aware of your body language. So you want to make sure that you're making good eye contact, you're speaking loudly, loud enough and clear enough for the interviewer to understand, and you also want to be aware of any fidgeting, um, you don't want to do things like cross your arms across your chest. Um, and I think if you have those things covered, you should pretty much have a successful interview. You want to make sure you keep your, the tone of the interview positive. So we don't want to needlessly disparage other people or other things. Um, when asked questions, try to consider the why. In other words, if I ask you about your extracurricular activities or about your favorite subject in school, um, it's nice for you to give me some basic information, but the interviewer wants to know what makes you tick. And so tell them why you play that sport or why you play that musical instrument, why you've put so much time into your extracurricular activities. Those things would be very insightful uh, for the interviewer in terms of your responses. As I mentioned before, don't forget uh, that you have the opportunity to ask questions. Uh, you most definitely can write questions down beforehand for the interviewer, and you can go one step further and ask the interviewer if it's okay for you to write down their responses. And again, if you're doing lots of different school visits in a short period of time, 
uh, it's remarkable how all the information can start meshing together. So writing things down definitely makes sense. For, in terms of parents, as I mentioned before, the interviewer will debrief with you um, after meeting with the student. Some things that you should consider is, I recommend that you avoid um, asking questions about outcomes. Um, in other words, you know, where do people go to college, so on and so forth, um, for several reasons. One, you can get that information elsewhere. And two, um, schools are looking for families who want to be supportive of their students. They are looking for families who want to partner with the school to assure student success. And they're looking for families who embrace the journey. In other words, um, they know that anytime they have a family that is willing to support a student throughout the time that they are in boarding school, they're willing to work in concert with the school administration and the faculty, ultimately outcomes will be desirable. But if the focus is solely on outcomes, then that's less than ideal. Um, after you get home, I recommend that you pull out your notes from your visits and you evaluate the pros and cons of each school, how you felt leaving each school. And you also want to use that business card that the interviewer gave you, because they all will, and send a quick thank you note to uh, each interviewer. And that could be in the form of an email or a postcard, a letter, whatever you think um, is most appropriate, whatever suits your style. I hope this has been helpful. Best of luck with your travel.